It's week two for the Harrisburg Stampede as they play host to the Maryland Eagles for a non-AIF battle here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us alongside Mike Garland. I'm Chris Markowitz. Harrisburg got off to a 1-0 start, but Mike, it wasn't without some obstacles as their initial starting quarterback, Caleb Walton, injured in pregame warm-ups and intros. So they went to Isaac Hurd. Didn't know what they were going to get going to get from him, but he was spectacular. Isaac Hurd was great last week, Chris. He had five touchdowns, four in the air, including three to Todd Simmons. He ran for one. And, of course, Coach Bernie North, Noah Tarski talked about Hurd and the value that he brings to the offense. He talked to us this week and said, we were planning to play him. We were planning on making him part of the offensive game plan, but no one in the gym expected that he would be so much a part of the plan due to the early injury in pregame. You mentioned three touchdown passes in the air to Simmons, all three of those for 30 yards or more. So we're talking some deep strikes. That was a great connection between those two. Look to see that on display tonight. And Mike, looking at this Maryland team, don't know much about them. They're not an AIF opponent. We were handed their roster about 15 minutes ago, so we're still trying to learn a little bit about them. What challenges does that pose, though, to Harrisburg? They don't really know what they're seeing here. Coach Nowatarski coming into this matchup said, you try your best from YouTube clips, but there's not much available on this team. Well, and that's right. You can look up the clips on YouTube of the brand of the Maryland Eagles, but that's not to say that you're going to find the same young men on the field today that you're finding on the internet. So you know that the team across from you is wearing black and red and that the jerseys have numbers and the helmets are rated to play football, and that's about it. You're going to line up against the opponent today. They are a nameless, faceless opponent, and you're just going to do your thing. What did he say to us on the field? Today's a work day, so be ready to work. The Stampede ready to go to work here tonight. We'll take a break and return with kickoff on SFBN. Springtime is the right time to go big time at Faulkner Honda in Harrisburg. Get big time selection. Choose from rows and rows of new 2024 Pilots, Accords, Passports, and more. Get big time savings. Drive a new Civic, just $2.99 a month. Choose from a great selection of Honda CRVs from just $3.79 a month. It's springtime, so go big time at Faulkner Honda in Harrisburg. Get started at FaulknerHonda.com to be sure. simplify your life. Belco's checking accounts are easy to use, and most accounts have no minimum balance requirements or monthly service charges. No matter what bells are ringing, you can rely on checking with Belco. Because we believe in every person, every dream, every time. Join today at belco.org or any local branch. Belco Community Credit Union. Believe in better banking. Coin toss time here in Harrisburg with the Stampede getting ready to host the Eagles. Harrisburg dressed in their home white this week, wearing yellow numbers and blue lettering. Maryland dressed in their road black with white lettering. Four new players on the roster this week for Harrisburg as it's an open roster given the fact that it's not a league game. So 24 players dressing today for the Stampede. Rob Harding, Nate Beamer, Jameer Reynolds, and Banks Williams all added to today's roster. And a couple of those guys starting this contest as well. Officials for today's game, Michael Davis, Joe Letizia, Shane Gemmel, Ken Broom, Steve Kinney. Chris Markowitz alongside Mike Garland waiting for... It seems, sounds like someone's deferred. Was that Harrisburg? Harrisburg won the toss and, and deferred. So trying to set the tone early. And we saw Harrisburg's kicker, Joseph Panuccio, warming up when we first arrived here at the arena, Mike. And he was getting that leg loose, trying to practice the uno, getting one through the uprights. Talking with Coach during the week, he said, 
Panuccio, look, not a, not a football guy, a soccer background. He's got a strong leg, something he's adjusting to. The height, or lack thereof, of the ceiling here in Harrisburg. And Coach Noah Tarski saying that it's not the lowest ceiling I've ever played in, but it's one of the lower ones I've ever coached in in my arena career. Well, the ceiling has a certain height to it, but from that ceiling then dangles air conditioning and vent ducts. There's speakers, there's lighting. So there's a lot of obstacles within the obstacles. And Joe Peduccio was doing his best to try to put it from the end line through the goalpost for that coveted Uno. But ultimately, we talked about special teams as we continue the conversation, Chris. That was something that Coach Nowatarski referenced during our pregame call this week, and that's better kick coverage. That was one of the big things for Cedar Rapids last week when they were starting their possessions near midfield. So Harrisburg will kick off left to right on your screen. Second game of the season for the Stampede. This will not count towards their record in AIF play, but an opportunity to play against a professional opponent and get a high quality 60 minutes of action in out on the turf. Back deep to return for Maryland is Lloyd Meeks along with Glenn Keller. Meeks has the neon green cleats, which you'll see on screen here in the near future. Keller with the dapper white spikes. And it looks like Maryland had one too many players on the field. So darting off to the bench was Frankie Sneed. And special teams, Mike, particularly kickoffs, an area of concern for the Stampede. They played well last week in a big win in their season opener against Cedar Rapids, but this was the one area they struggled. Good kick to start here. Keller fields it in his own end zone and is wrapped up near his own 10-yard line. Great coverage brought down by Howard Holton and Mike, much better coverage downfield on the opening kickoff. Well, and it took a big bounce. Joe Panuccio got that big bounce near the goal line. The ball took a big hop over the hands of Meeks, and then the Harrisburg coverage team was able to get down there and make a big stop. So the Eagles will have the ball starting at about their 11-yard line, which is probably one of the better field positions from a defensive standpoint that Harrisburg's faced early in this season. Quarterback for Maryland, number 13, Jay Palmer. And this will be our first look at the Eagles offense tonight. Elijah Palmer spread out to the left. Devin Richards in the backfield. Throw to the close sideline, incomplete. Excellent coverage there by Howard Holton, who had Palmer blanketed from the snap. And Holton was trying to jump that route. Not exactly a great pass coming off the hands of the Eagles quarterback, A.J. Palmer. Yeah, dangerous spot there because if Holton was able to break inside, that could have been six for Harrisburg. And you can see one more time, Palmer just kind of zings it out there. Holton stepped up, stepped in, had a hand on the receiver, but nothing that would have warranted a flag as second down is forthcoming. Marcus Morgan spread out to the right. Lloyd Meeks in the backfield out of the sprinter position. He goes in motion. Deep ball, close sideline, out of bounds. The intended man was Lloyd Meeks who came sprinting from the backfield, but excellent coverage yet again by Harrisburg. And these fine folks in the box seats along the dasher boards need to be aware those balls are flying at him. One of the fans last week had two targets, no completions. Yeah, opportunities to make the team coming few and far between for the fans here in Harrisburg, but you never know. You could catch the eye of Coach Noah Tarski just by making a play on the sideline. Well, Meanwhile, should. third and 10 for Maryland. Third down and 10, certainly uh, 10 yards to gain. This is a big play here on this first possession. No punting in this league, so the Eagles in interesting field position here. Time to throw, pass over the middle, complete this time to Meeks, who is well shy of the yard to gain, three yards on the reception. 
Anilio Pena had the tackle. He's wearing number 30 this week, was wearing number two last week, so he stops the receiver short of the line to gain, stepping up, making that initial contact and bringing him down short of the 15-yard line. And let's see what Maryland does here. Looks for now as if they will leave the, oh no, they're going to kick here. And it's Fabrizio Riley. This is a long one. Ball's going to be spotted at the nine yard line. It's about 42 yards here through the air. I trust your math, sir. Now the coaching staff of the Maryland Eagles, Matt Steeple and crew are going to use their first timeout of the contest to talk this one over. Well, this is the first game of the season for Maryland, Mike, and talking with Coach Nowitarski coming into this contest, he said that, look, we don't have much film on them. We don't know much about them. He did indicate to us when we spoke with him about two hours before kickoff, it sounds like they're gathering a lot of guys together, all-star caliber players on the outdoor game. But how does that mesh into the indoor game? And we see here on their first drive, stalled deep in their own territory in a tough spot because if they don't pick this up as they'll go for it, oh no, they're going to kick still. But if they don't convert here, excellent field position for Harrisburg. Well, certain guys look like certain positions. And when I saw Fabrizio Riley in the hallway, I said, that guy looks like a kicker. And indeed, he is. That's not helpful. And Riley has to fall on the Aaron snap. He was not ready for it. Some confusion as Eddie Robinson not ready to take the snap there. A nightmare start for the Eagles. Well, I mean, and I just had the greatest analysis ever. That is not helpful. No, absolutely not helpful if you're the Maryland Eagles. You get the first possession of the game on the special teams play, and you get the snap from center, which goes directly to the kicker. I don't know if they were trying to run a fake or if the holder just wasn't ready, but there was clearly an important element of that play that was missing. And it's excellent field position to start for Harrisburg with the football on Maryland's four yard line. First and goal and our first look today at Isaac Hurd. In the gun, keeper, and that's six. Isaac Hurd with his second rushing touchdown of the season. And the Harrisburg Stampede jump out to a 6-0 lead. That looked so simple, Chris. You and I could have run that in untouched. He took that snap in the shotgun, and you'll see it here on the replay. Takes the snap, took one quick look to the left, and then walked it into the end zone. Harrisburg's drive, one play, four yards, Economical. six points, and an opportunity for one more here. Clock rolling, it's a running clock here in the arena game. Now, Panuccio did have some struggles on extra point tries a week ago, but this one straight down the middle. 10.28 left to play in the opening quarter. Chris Markowitz alongside Mike Garland as Harrisburg leads Maryland 7-zip. And Mike, a dream start for Harrisburg. For Maryland, sloppy start. Completed just one of three passes. And then the bad snap or the miscommunication on the snap for the field goal try leads to six. Well, the one thing I've seen through one full game of indoor football here in the equine arena of the Pennsylvania State Farm Show Complex is if you're looking for crisp football action, if you're looking for NFL quality action, you may want to look a different direction. If you're looking to be entertained, you have it right here in Harrisburg. I have been thoroughly entertained with what I have seen last week and thus far. Is it crisp? Absolutely not. But you have guys out here getting one more try, one more go around, one more opportunity to play and have fun. And if you've ever played football, that's all anybody wants. Maryland's going to have their second possession. Just another opportunity to do their thing. Well, and Harrisburg playing with a lead as the Stampede trailed early on in their season opener a week ago. But now their defense with an opportunity to get another turnover and Coach Notarski still huge on two stops, two turnovers. They got one already. Second kickoff today. Sales out of bounds. Touchback. And this will be decent field position for the Eagles. I believe that puts the ball at the 20 like a traditional touchback or like the old school traditional touchback, I believe. 
The ball's now spotted at the 30 or 35, depending on the college or the NFL level as they look at player safety. But you don't have a lot of field to work with here, so you go to the 20. Well, and this is exactly what the Eagles need, Mike, as their offense looks very disjointed on that opening drive, backed up near their own end zone. Perhaps some more room to breathe here on their own 20. Well, another opportunity for quarterback A.J. Palmer to do his thing. Palmer, a, a big dude back there. His physical stature much different than that of Isaac Hurd in the Harrisburg Stampede. But there he sets, ready to go on his second offensive series. Meeks in motion. Palmer takes the snap. Looks Meeks' way. Has him wide open over the middle. And that's a first down and more as Meeks spins out of the initial contact and picks up 13 yards. Great job, Lloyd Meeks. He hauled in the pass, turned up field into plus territory, and he battled once he came against some resistance from the Harrisburg defense. Lloyd Meeks, the lead target so far. One more look here. You can see that catch right in the middle at about the 23, and then he fights forward for about 10 more yards. The Eagles in Harrisburg territory for the first time tonight. 9.26 to play in the first quarter. Palmer with two men sprinting forward. He's got time. Unloads. End zone. Out of bounds. Intended again for Meeks. That one was overthrown just a bit, Chris. Well, if you're going to miss on the post route, you want to miss deep, especially against these athletic D-backs for the Stampede. And there's a couple of them back there in the secondary for head coach Bernie Nowitarski. Banks Williams, one of them, as he was added to the roster for today's contest. Howard Holton as well, Anilio Pena in the secondary for the Stampede. Eight men on offense, eight men on defense. Second down and 10 here for Maryland. Ball on the Harrisburg 17. Palmer, rushed, hit, sacked. And his helmet flies off to boot. Three men in on the play. Yuka Anya, one of them. We'll see who gets credit for the sack, but great pressure there by Harrisburg. A lot of things happened on that play, Chris. You had helmets flying, footballs flying, whistles blowing. But I'll tell you what, there was certainly a breakdown up front on that Maryland offensive line, and you get the rush off the left side, off the left guard, left tackle. A helmet pops off, the ball comes out. Great pressure, great contact by Devin Thomas. Son of former NFL player Adelius Thomas, who played for the Pats and the Ravens. He had a strip sack last week that led to a touchdown for the Stampede. Thomas, one of the defensive captains for the Stampede, and he has jumped out of the gate early on for them defensively. Third down and very long now for Maryland as they lost seven yards on that play, make it a third and 17. High snap, Palmer bobbles it and has to fall down just to prevent the fumble for a touchdown. Hodges gets credited with the sack, but another disaster on offense for Maryland. This is an opportunity for the Harrisburg Stampede players to pad those stats. I know we talked about it being a non-league game, but that doesn't mean they're not keeping score at home. So you can put another sack on the, the totals there for Harrisburg. Fourth down and a Pennsylvania turnpike to go here for Maryland. That's an expensive assessment right there, Chris. I appreciate the attire of left tackle Desiree Beach of the Maryland Eagles. He has a hooded sweatshirt on. Like you'd see a kid in Little League football showing up and it's, I know it's chilly outside with the wind gust today, but I'm not sure it's hooded sweatshirt weather indoors here at the farm show. Fourth down and 30 to go for Maryland. And they're going to go for it. Palmer under center. Looks to run. Gets about two yards, and it's a turnover on downs. Harrisburg building a wall defensively tonight. That was Josh Holly in on the stop, the math teacher out of Baltimore. And I'm not sure that for the Maryland Eagles, a quarterback draw on fourth and 30 
is the way you want to go. A.J. Palmer tackled for that loss. And again, great field position for the second drive of the game for the Harrisburg Stampede. I could easily see them taking a shot at the end zone here on first down. Clock rolling under six minutes to play in the first quarter. Harrisburg scored on one play on their opening drive. It was a four-yard touchdown scamper by Hurd. This time he rolls left and will keep again. Met short of the line of scrimmage, lost a yard there. Frankie Sneed with an excellent read on the play. Crazy to think that in this arena football, fast-paced league that, that we see now here in week two that Harrisburg has run two offensive plays from scrimmage and they've both been runs. Well, for the Stampede, there hasn't been much of a need to go to the air, though, given their short down, or short distance, I should say, when they've picked up the football relative to the end zone. It's been the opposite of what we saw with them in the first quarter a week ago. Heard with time now, fires close sideline, complete. And a nice move as we've got a jersey number not on our roster, but that is Todd Simmons, who made the switch from 27 to five. Scored three touchdowns last week wearing a different jersey. You'd think he'd want to stick to it, but trying something new today. Hey, he was uh, Mr. Shorehands last week. Heard taking that shotgun snap, and Simmons there on the near sideline from the 10, the 5, and then he is upended and taken down. And Quan McCarter with the big hit for the Eagles, really the first highlight of the night for the Maryland Eagles. 4.23 and counting in the opening quarter. Hurd sends two in motion. It's a handoff as the big fella, Giovanni Franklin, rumbles forward for a couple of yards. Gets three on the carry. One yard shy of Pater. Second and goal for Harrisburg. Franklin has a rugby background. He's from Anchorage, Alaska. We talked about it last week. I've been to Anchorage, Alaska, Chris. It's a, it's a beautiful place. They do have high school football in Alaska, but... Uh, not a lot of opponents to play, so they, they, they fly from school to school. And you sometimes play them twice in a season. Second and goal now for Harrisburg. Heard, end zone, touchdown, Aaron Brown on the two yard strike. And the Stampede take a two touchdown advantage with 3.23 to go in the first. That's the second touchdown catch of the season for Aaron Brown. He had one last week and another today. And the big guy for Moravian put six more on the board. You can see in the corner of the end zone, hauling that one in with ease as Harrisburg extends the lead now to 13-0 in the first quarter. And a lucky fan with a souvenir there, which is why you should come out to Harrisburg Check out the stampede, you never know. You could be sitting right near the action and going home with a game ball as Panuccio drives it through once again. And it's a 14-0 lead for Harrisburg with 2.47 left to go in the first quarter. Chris Markowitz alongside Mike Garland. And Mike, perfect start for Harrisburg, Maryland leaving a lot to be desired out on the field right now. Absolutely, two subpar offensive drives for the Maryland Eagles, and the Stampede have been able to capitalize early in the first quarter. The promo crew on the field getting some, some things set up here for some in-game action. I believe they Last week, didn't they run some kids down here and try to get them dressed as fast as possible? I believe so, and I think that takes us to our first media timeout of the contest. We'll step away with Harrisburg leading Maryland 14-0 live on SFBN.
47 remaining in the first quarter here in Harrisburg. Week two for the Stampede. And they're out to a great start here again tonight, leading the Maryland Eagles 14-0. Chris Markowitz alongside Mike Garland. And Mike, the focus is always for Coach Noah Tarsi. Defense has to come and play, get two stops and two turnovers. They forced a turnover on a bad snap, and then they got a turnover on downs. So the defense has come to play, and then the offense has been efficient in short yardage situations, converting an Isaac Hurd touchdown run and then a touchdown pass to Aaron Brown. Great start for the Hurd, or excuse me, for the Stampede on offense. Now on the return, it's McCarter near the 15, stopped there and tossed to the turf. Met by a trio of Harrisburg defenders, Andrew Schrader, the first man to get to him. Schrader playing with unbridled aggression today as he makes that big hit. I mean, think about it. On special teams, regardless of the level or style of football, you get a full-on sprint to collide into someone. There's a pad down in the Harrisburg end zone right now off of our screen. I'm not so sure it matters yet, but it could come into play. Player safety, of course, there's that, that dreaded pad that's come off. Freedom Mortgage getting a little extra advertisement today here at the uh, Equine Arena at the Pennsylvania State Farm Show Complex. Meanwhile, it's first and 10 for Maryland on their own 15. And trouble on the handoff. It's a fumble and a turnover. The Stampede have it. Third turnover today by Maryland as Devin Thomas comes away with it. Maryland went under center, looking to run the ball out of traditional offensive set, and yet another turnover. You mentioned a fumble on a field goal attempt on the first offensive drive, turnover on downs on the second offensive drive, and now this, a generally clean center quarterback exchange, but the handoff to Devin Richards hit the carpet here, and it was gobbled up by Josh Holly, We've said his name a couple of times tonight. Third drive for the Stampede tonight, starting within the Maryland 15-yard line. Hurt in the gun. He's got time. Corner, touchdown! Patrick Gorman with his first score of the season. And the Stampede running it up here in the opening quarter. It's becoming like an episode of Oprah, Chris. You get a touchdown, you get a touchdown, you get a touchdown. The third touchdown today for Isaac Hurd. One running, two passing. And this is the second time that Harrisburg has scored on its first play from scrimmage following a Maryland possession. So Harrisburg with a dream start and the fans here Getting a lot of souvenirs to go home with right now. Panuccio on for the extra point try. Clock continues to run. 33 seconds and counting here in the first quarter. And make it a 21 point lead for Harrisburg with 25 seconds to play. Chris Markowitz alongside Mike Garland and Mike Harrisburg Give them credit, taking advantage on each of the Maryland turnovers, but the Eagles really need to clean things up. Otherwise, this one could turn ugly very quickly. I'd say if Maryland doesn't make a change, it's going to be a long bus ride back. But the reality is each and every one of these guys likely drove here in their own car or carpooled with a teammate. So there's going to be 15 different tough drives home at this point for Maryland. 25.2 seconds remaining in the first quarter. We'll update that on-screen graphic for you here in the near future. The Stampede mascot, Chris, has made its way up to us. I'm not sure if it's, uh, we can put the mascot on the air. Well, we'll have to run that one by Ari Bluestein first. Let me shoot him a text and make sure that follows the script. <laughs> Ari, our executive producer. He's done a great job putting all this together showcasing the stampede on SFBN. I want, to, I want to give a huge shout out to Sean Kelly and the crew here at work today. 
doing an excellent job behind the scenes, making me, I can't speak for you, Mike, but me look and sound far better than I normally do. I saw me on camera. I still didn't look good. <laughs> Back to return for Maryland is Keller, who has room to run up the middle, then taken down hard at the 12-yard line. Tackle made by Matt Hodges. Matt Hodges bulldogged Glenn Cut Keller down into the turf here at the Farm Show Complex. That'll probably be the final play of the first quarter as referee Michael Davis winds the clock and it'll roll down to zero. It's been an interesting first quarter, Chris. 21 points for the Harrisburg Stampede and the Maryland Eagles haven't been able to get out of their own way. And they'll have to wait until the second quarter to try to do just that. As we'll take a break, don't go anywhere. You're watching Harrisburg Stampede Football on SFBN. Second quarter here in Harrisburg, short completion, maybe lost a yard there. It's Lloyd Meeks on the catch. Chris Markowitz alongside Mike Garland. And Mike, Harrisburg with a dream start to this game, ahead 21-0. The Eagles need to score and they need to do so quickly. Really struggling on offense right now. Well, let's go one step back. They need a first down. Forget about the points right now. They need a first down. And it was great defensive coverage by Rob Harding, one of the roster add-ons for this non-league game he made the tackle but yeah Maryland just has not been able to click has has really not been able to put a series of football plays together AJ Palmer doing his best back there but lack of coordination on the Eagles side 14 minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the first half second and 11 Palmer good pass here to the far sideline complete and this will be the second biggest pickup of the day for Maryland it's Palmer about two yards shy of the marker to gain. The last time the Maryland Eagles had a big play, they, they had a, a slip up on third down, which pushed them back even farther. But hey, baby steps. They're three and a half feet away from picking up their first first down of the game. And this has been their best field position since that second drive where they got it to the Harrisburg 20. Third and two for the Eagles. Complete for a first down and more. Meeks spinning out of a few tackles and wrapped up at the 20. But Lloyd Meeks continues to be a quality target for Palmer over the middle of the field. Well, and it's likely that these guys for the Maryland Eagles don't have a lot of reps together. But as the game is playing out, you said it right there. You're seeing Lloyd Meeks to Glenn Keller over and over again. So maybe they found something that works. And I know you only have three or four options in arena football, but if you find one that works, stick with it until they stop you. And Harrisburg struggling getting Meeks to the turf when he makes a catch. He's got that ability to shake loose even after some contact. That's what you need, the yards after catch. That's big. First and 10 from the Harrisburg 20-yard line for Maryland. Palmer nearly picked off, and it's Banks Williams who got a hand on it. A few inches away there from six points, but he'll take the deflection. A nice opportunity jumping on the ball again. He couldn't get the pick, but he knocked it down. Take a look at it one more time. The receiver's in motion. 
And as the pass was thrown by A.J. Palmer, you had Todd Simmons swat it down. Maryland calling timeout here with 12 minutes to play in the first, second quarter. Excuse me. We'll keep it here. Chris Markowitz alongside Mike Garland. Mike, Maryland has struggled early on offensively. Three turnovers in the first quarter. But this looks like their most promising drive so far. What has changed for the Eagles on this drive? Well, I think they've been able to get something going between A.J. Palmer and Glenn Keller. That one-two punch is helping move the ball down the field. And also, I mean, there's a killer instinct that comes with playing football. And Coach Bernie Nowitarski talked to us about how the team came out maybe a little too hyped last week. So they're on a more le uh, even kill keel this week. But at the same time, now you're up 21 nothing. There's a lot of time left, but you can start to see, even as a professional, how things are going to play out. So maybe you don't press as hard, you, you fall back a little bit, and it gives them a, an advantage that they didn't have right away. Out of the timeout, second and 20 for Maryland from the Harrisburg, second and 10, excuse me, from the Harrisburg 20. Palmer with time here. Wants the end zone, but sails it out of bounds intended for Glenn Keller. That's a couple times now we've seen Palmer launch it deep, but be well off target. He's trying, he's looking for that home run shot. He's going to the end zone a couple of times and just hasn't been able to find anybody in the field of play. You, you got to give him an A for effort. Is this four down territory for the Eagles or would you kick a field goal here if you don't pick up the, the third down? I think it's four downs in the sense of you are trying to score a touchdown. You're down 21 nothing. plus the last time you tried a field goal, it looked like the Keystone Cops out there in the Keystone State. Where I guess it's just Cops in this case. Third and 10 for Maryland coming out of the huddle here. They need to get to the Harrisburg 10 yard line. I'm doing my best just to keep a straight face partner with all these wisecracks, by the way. So bear with me here. It's entertaining football. Palmer nearly brought down and finally wrapped up trying to roll out to his right. Yuka Anya with the sack. And it's fourth and 12 coming up for Maryland. Decision time for the Eagles. Anya out of one of the best state schools in Pennsylvania, Shippensburg University, home of the Red Raiders or Raiders if you're a more modern day attendee of Shippensburg. He plays with quick feet, he plays with anger, and this time he plays with one sack. What makes you say that's one of the better schools in the state? Because they gave me a degree <laughs> in May of 2001. I think I earned it. I definitely paid for it, but they gave me one. There's at least one photo on the internet that proves I graduated. That's good enough for me, partner. Hey, I yeah, why not, right? There's actually video evidence, too. <laughs> Photoshop wasn't that great in 2001. <laughs> I don't think it existed in 2001, did it? That's MS Paint time. Meanwhile, 4th and 12 here for Maryland. With 9.48 remaining in the first half, Palmer leans back and sails the pass too high for Devin Richards to bring it down. Another turnover on down, so two turnovers and two stops for the Harrisburg Stampede. And that comes with 9.41 to go in the first half. The clock stops on the change of possession, but it will wind momentarily, and the Harrisburg defense has been stout. They've been a brick wall against this Maryland Eagles team. And another opportunity to put points on the board. I know this is a non-league game, but you have somebody in Todd Simmons who is your backup or emergency quarterback, and you would wonder at what point, if you're Coach Bernie Nowitzarski, knowing you have regular season games that count, Going forward, do you give Isaac Hurd a break and you give Simmons some reps? Because we saw last week, you never know when the next man up needs to come. Well, we'll see how Harrisburg approaches this drive with 9.20 remaining in the half. They like the big strike downfield. Go short here to the close sideline, and that's Gorman stopped about two yards shy of the yard to gain. Check that, that's Andrew Schrader on the reception. And we want to thank the Schrader family for letting us know that it is indeed Schrader. 
like, nice. like Ken, the NASCAR driver, not Schroeder, like Ricky, the 80s TV star. And a nice catch there for Andrew up against the boards. This is a very deep Harrisburg team when you look at the receiver position. So many different threats. We talked with Coach Nowatarski about this during the week, and we said, look, if teams are trying to shut down Todd Simmons, how much confidence do you have in your other guys? A lot of confidence. Not even a question, not a hesitation. Exactly. He was very confident in the young men he has on his team and what they can do. Second and one here for Harrisburg. Hurt in the gun. He'll run. First down and more here. Hurd breaks the tackle. Looking for six, and he's got it. Second rushing touchdown tonight for Isaac Hurd. The Hurd is the word for the Harrisburg Stampede. And that wasn't just a four-yard scamper. That was, that was some dazzle out there. That was about an 18-yard touchdown run for Isaac Hurd. His fourth touchdown in one form or the other today two passing two rushing and he made it look simple ninth touchdown overall on the season for Hurd, and we are not even six quarters into it isaac Hurd wasn't slated to start for harrisburg what a start to the season for him though he played at naia southern oregon university originally from hawaii Twenty-eight nothing is the score with seven twenty remaining, seven twenty-three remaining here in the second quarter. Chris Markowitz alongside Mike Garland, and Mike, you raised a good point a few moments ago. Still a lot of time to play, but at what point do you consider on this Harrisburg coaching staff letting some of your guys who may not typically get starting minutes? get out there on the turf well you have to do something and you don't want anybody to get injured but you only have 24 25 guys dressed so it's not like you have a deep bench that you can go to this isn't the nfl it's not a 53-man roster and it's not little league where everybody gets a chance to play this is professional football in some capacity so you only have so many guys that can go out there but if you're a starter, if you're Isaac Hurd, you want to do the best you can for as long as you can. But you also don't want to make a mockery of the game. You don't want to have, you know, a Giovanni Franklin taking snaps out of the shotgun. So you want to you want to have good sportsmanship, but you want to be true to, to your season and not jeopardize the, the rest of your, your regular season with a handful of games to come. Now, Maryland, look, they still have plenty of time here. 7.23 to go in the second quarter, down four touchdowns, not impossible. But they've got to clean things up on offense. They've had some glimmers, some flashes in the pan to say. But beyond the 10-yard pickups on throws over the middle, haven't seen much promise from their offense. So they've far. had two real offensive plays of substance. The rest has been fumbles, turnovers, sacks, plays for no gain. And they'll have another chance here. This is their fifth or sixth offensive possession of this first half. But Really nothing to show of it. High kick, and that hits the ceiling. There's probably some rule about what happens now. We'll figure it out in a minute. Maryland will have good field position here as the Eagles get the ball on their own 20 to start. It's scored as a touchback, so it will be first and 10 from the 20. When the arena comes into play, and every arena, regardless, has those sort of ground rules. You see it at Tropicana Field in Tampa for the Rays games where they have the, the, the rings around. And in the old days at uh, Minute Maid Park or whatever corporate name has been attached to it in New Houston, I mean, there was a hill and a flag in center field in play. Wrigley Field has the ivy. And if I've learned anything from trying to pull ivy off the trees in my backyard, that ivy is unforgiving. You get a baseball in there, you may never come out. Well, I'm used to the differences in field dimensions in Major League Baseball, Minor League Baseball. Football, still new to me. We're figuring this one out as we go along, as are a lot of these players. 6.30 remaining in the second quarter. Chris Markowitz alongside Mike Garland. Maryland in desperate need of points on this drive. Pass deflected once again by Banks Williams, his second deflection tonight. But we've got a flag on the field. Flag on the turf near the 21-yard line. I believe this is only the second penalty of the entire game. 
Those Harrisburg Stampede uniforms actually come across better on a TV monitor than they do in real life. It's like someone took a white canvas and then a yellow highlighter. Rob Harding called for the illegal defense penalty. They say he lined up in the stack, so it's a five-yard pickup for Maryland. And a first and 10. They will move the chains. So midfield now is where the Eagles have the football. Looking for points here. Trailing by four touchdowns in the second quarter. Stampede players having a conversation with referee Michael Davis. I'll be trying to better understand that illegal defense call. If you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it, right? That's what I was told in my third grade social studies class. I learned that in a relationship once. <laughs> Fair enough. Still learning. Palmer on first and ten. Slings, end zone, intercepted! And it's picked off by number 27, Jeremy Lewis, the defensive back out of Tiffin University. Fifth turnover today, forced by Harrisburg. And that might be the first interception we've seen for the Stampede through two games or through a game and a half, but it was an underthrown pass, and he did a great job, Jeremy Lewis did, getting in there, playing the ball, and pulling it away from the intended receiver, which was Elijah Palmer. So first down and 10 for the Stampede. You said it's the fifth turnover. And Maryland is really, really having a tough time and a real tough go at it here in the first half. The only downside for Harrisburg, this by far their worst field position offensively tonight. On oh, nuts. Should have knocked it down. I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here, Chris. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it, they're probably going to be okay. Taking their time here. Obviously no hurry. Letting some clock run. 450 and counting in the first half. Heard. Wants it all. And oh. doesn't have it in and out of the hands of Todd Simmons. He had six points in his fingers. Couldn't hold on for the 45-yard touchdown strike. That ball was thrown just a hair too long by Isaac Hurd. And you can see him in the end zone dancing around and from the bottom of the A lets it fly and right off the fingertips of the intended receiver. Yeah, that's one Simmons would like to have back. Would have been his fourth touchdown of the year. It's been video game type stats for Isaac Hurd and the Harrisburg Stampede. We have come to learn there are play clocks in the league. They exist on a table to our left, and I believe they have 40 seconds to snap the ball. We can't see them, but the players can. Hurd in the gun on second and 10. Run it again. Has a different man this time. Oh. And Marcus Taylor can't hold on for the touchdown. Oh, man. Back-to-back 45-yard -back opportunities in and out of the hands. You know what you do, Chris? You run it a third time. That's the same play, two plays in a row. And each time you've had a receiver open and in the position to make the catch, this one was actually right there and dropped. The previous one just a hair too far. So, hey, let's go best out of three, although technically I guess they're 0 for 2, which is best out of three, but not in a good way. Run the same play again. Why not? 3-0-3 three, oh, three and counting here in the first half. Now, Harrisburg does have to get to the Maryland or to their own 15-yard line to pick up a first down. Movement up front, penalty flags fly, and we'll see who it's on. Clock pauses with 2.49 to play in the quarter. It's going to be an encroachment call, I believe. As the Maryland defense begins to back up. Nice crowd here tonight, Chris, for week two. And the Stampede will go on the road next week against the Columbus Lions, presumably Columbus, Ohio. 
and then back home in a couple of weeks against those very same Columbus Lions. So back-to-back -back games against Columbus. Well, they'll, so they'll definitely have some tape on the Lions when they return here in two weeks. Think they'll have a roster? That is to be determined. <laughs> 226 and counting here in the first half. Third and five for Harrisburg. Their first third down of the day. High snap, Hurd comes down with it. Play breaks down, he'll scramble. And he has plenty of room to run. Hurd up the close sideline and shoved down at the 15 yard line. Some extracurriculars after the play. Jelani Lugo not happy with Andrew Schrader's block, but doesn't matter. Smash Mouth football being played right now by the Stampede as they pick up their first third down conversion on one try tonight. We talked to Coach Noah Bern uh, excuse me, Bernie Nowatowski this week about the shotgun exchange, the center quarterback exchange. It has not been a problem thus far. That's really the first high one we've seen for the Stampede all game long, and then Hurd just hauled it down and trucked it into Maryland territory. And a nice job by Andrew Schrader not to engage after the whistle and draw any kind of silly penalty. Sure, the Maryland defender had issue, but Schrader did the right thing, put his hands up, and just walked away. 25-yard run by Hurd. Penalty flags fly here. This will be for illegal motion. It had to be really bad to actually draw an illegal motion penalty in this league. I've seen guys go all kinds of different ways and to finally draw an illegal motion penalty, one of the linemen had to have moved. Moves the Harrisburg offense back by five yards. I don't think they mind though, how, given how effective they've been through the air tonight. On the air, in the air and on the ground. I mean, they're, they're doing everything. They're like UPS. And now a timeout taken by the Stampede. We'll take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Stampede Football on SFBN. Eight seconds remaining in the first half here in Harrisburg. Chris Markowitz alongside Mike Garland. Timeout taken by the Stampede, facing a first and 15. But, Mike, Harrisburg has not struggled much here tonight. No, not one bit. In fact, I think they've scored on every possession they've had, and they're, they're looking to do it one more time. They've had opportunities on this drive to go deep on, on long passes, and the passes have just fallen short or gone just a little bit long. You get a big run by Isaac Hurd, and now it's first down and 15. There was a penalty, so probably the one negative that Harrisburg has seen in this first half. But with one minute remaining in the first half, I can easily see Harrisburg holding onto this ball, getting some points right before the end of the quarter, just like they did last week against Cedar Rapids, and then taking it into the locker room comfortably up. And remember, Harrisburg deferred to start, so the Stampede will get the football at the beginning of the third quarter, a chance to really separate themselves right now from the Eagles. Out of the timeout, it's hurting the gun. High snap, he brings it down. Screen pass dropped by Giovanni Franklin. Three drops on the drive by Harrisburg. Well, and Franklin was open and he had room to run. Maybe he wouldn't have picked up the first down, but he definitely would have got that big frame in motion and made it a more manageable second down for the Harrisburg Stampede. Clock pauses under a minute to play in the half. The 
This time it's an open Schrader pushed against the boards after picking up nine yards on the reception. And again, the clock will stop. Sure hands Schrader, let's just call him that because that's what he's been for Isaac Hurd and Coach Nowitzki this season. So third down and manageable here for Harrisburg. The football on Maryland's 11. The Stampede have to get it to the Eagles' five. And under a minute remaining, get those clock stoppages. This game is two different speeds. It's Usain Bolt speed early on, and then it's Mike Garland speed with under a minute to go. That's because you're a distance runner. You, you pace yourself. I can go far in my car. <laughs> Third and six. Heard with time. End zone. Intercepted. First turnover of the season by Hurd. Picked off by Meeks, who has room to run and returns it to the 10. Hurd spent the eternity in the pocket. He had he had all kinds of time. And we were told, you know, 2.4 seconds to get a pass off. He was back there, three, four seconds scanning the field. Then he tried to thread a needle and the hole just wasn't there. It got tipped. And then Meeks hauled it in for the interception. I mean, look, he's dancing in the pocket, takes a hit as he lets it go. And you're right, the first turnover of the season for Isaac Hurd and the Harrisburg Stampede. So much like the Stampede capitalized last week on a late second quarter turnover from Cedar Rapids, can Maryland do the same thing? The Eagles really need points right now, trailing 28-0 with 39 seconds to play in the first half. And Harrisburg gets the ball to start the third quarter. Lloyd Meeks, he's been the lone bright spot for the Eagles. We've seen him make a couple nice plays on catches over the middle, that interception. Their highlight play tonight. So Meeks, the star so far for the Maryland Eagles. He has been that one constant for head coach Matt Steeple in the Maryland Eagles. First and 10 for Maryland. The ball on the Eagles' own 10 yard line. Palmer loses six yards on the sack. That play was doomed from the start. Anya once again in on that play along with Joshua Holly. And this defensive line for Harrisburg has been dominant tonight. They have been dominant and they've really done their part to keep Maryland in check as the Stampede called that timeout. Took an opportunity to Google Lloyd Meeks. We'll get to him in just a moment, but you hear you can see again as you, you have A.J. Palmer just can't get out of his own way in the backfield, and he is sacked for the second or third time tonight. But Lloyd Meeks does have some football experience. He played at Teal College, which is in western Pennsylvania. He's from Baltimore originally, Our Lady of Mount Carmel High School. And uh, you can see that athletic ability for Meeks today for the Maryland Eagles. They're going to need him here as... The Eagles have a second down and 16 with the football on their own four-yard line. This is dangerous territory for Maryland as Harrisburg has forced a number of turnovers in this area through the first six quarters of the season. Palmer, quick throw over the middle, short intended for Meeks. That's the right idea, but those two out of sync on the play. Out of sync, the pass was underthrown and Anilio Pena was in coverage and he was running with the receiver so he didn't even turn around. Had he turned around, he might have been able to come back to it and intercept it. Third and 16 for Maryland. Harrisburg pitching a shutout right now in the first half. Coach Noah Tarski said to us during our conversation with him during the week, Maryland better come to play tonight because we will. As it's an incomplete pass intended for Elijah Palmer. And Mike, Coach Noah Tarski told us, look, we're showing up to do work on Saturday night. And to Harrisburg's credit, they have done just that. Absolutely. If you're going to come to work on a Saturday night, you got to be ready to go. And that's exactly what they've been there as Elijah Palmer got 
bent in half on that attempted catch. Still just 24.4 seconds remaining, 24.7, excuse me, remaining in the second quarter. There really is a noticeable difference. I made a joke, but it's reality. A noticeable difference in the speed of the game under a minute when it's a primary passing league and you're stopping the clock after every play. Yeah, it took us about 50 minutes to get through the first 29 minutes off the clock. These last 30 seconds have taken us close to seven minutes already. Palmer throws incomplete intended for Ely. And it's another turnover on downs. As Harrisburg set up with a golden opportunity in the red zone. Well, I've seen them run a play on first and goal from the four one, once before, and I wonder if we'll see that exact same play here with 20.7 seconds. Magic Hurd had scored that rushing touchdown in the first quarter. It was Harrisburg's first rushing score of the game. The benches for these respective teams are in the end zone, so while Harrisburg didn't have far to go to bring the offense on the field, Maryland had a long way to go to bring their defense out. Hurd looks right, his pass hauled in. Tough catch by Simmons, but he loses three on the play. A couple of seconds ran off the clock, but now it stops as they set the ball and they'll start it again. So unless they're gonna call a timeout, Harrisburg may be content with making this the final play of the quarter. And they will indeed call a timeout with .7 seconds remaining in the third. Some questionable clock management there for either Isaac Hurd or the Harrisburg Stampede coaching staff with .7 seconds remaining. There was about 16 seconds on the clock when that catch was made. They stopped the clock momentarily to set the ball and then you know, lack of urgency on the Stampede side. And sure, you have the timeouts. I don't think the coaches wanted to use them. They wanted to get the playoff. And then when you realize, hey, we're not gonna get this done, call the timeout. Well, now Harrisburg leaving the offense on the field, it looks like, and they will go for six here on what will be the final play of the second quarter. Chris Markowitz alongside Mike Garland. It's been a dominant performance tonight by the Stampede defense, forcing six turnovers. Long time out here as we're finally ready to rock. What's the over-under on how long .7 seconds actually takes? Ooh, that's a good one. I'd say about 90 seconds is what we're <laughs> approaching. I mean, if it's an incomplete pass, they, they can run another play. We'll see, though. .7 seconds, I mean, that's it's pretty quick. It's a blink of an eye. It's, well, I think you blink, you blink. Oh, more stoppage. Uh-oh. Some arguing, some infighting now. I'm not sure. No, that's not the way to go. That's definitely not a good look for the Stampede when you have players getting in each other's faces on the field. You, you expect that sometimes in a locker room, on a bench, but somebody even lost a mouthpiece. A lot of confusion here ahead of this second and goal play. Heard. Bad snap. Scoops it up. Fires, end zone, touchdown! What a catch by Andrew Schrader! Wow, Schrader battled through the defensive sea of arms and eagles, because that would be wings in that case, and managed to haul it in. I mean, the high shotgun snap, and actually, I take that back. It wasn't necessarily a high snap. Hurd just couldn't handle it. Then he rolled to his left and zinged it into the corner of the end zone, and Schrader in the area of two or three defenders, and each of those Maryland defenders walk away pointing fingers at each other. What's the old phrase? When you point one out, there's, there's four pointing back at you. Well, and there's five touchdowns on the board for the Stampede. Giving up keeping stats. 
Five for five on extra point tries is Joseph Panuccio at Harrisburg. Takes a dominant performance into the locker room as the Stampede lead the Eagles 35 nothing. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Harrisburg Stampede Football live on, ES on SFBN. to go big time at Faulkner Honda in Harrisburg. Get big time selection. Choose from rows and rows of new 2024 Pilots, Accords, Passports, and more. Get big time savings. Drive a new Civic, just $2.99 a month. Choose from a great selection of Honda CRVs from just $3.79 a month. It's springtime, so go big time at Faulkner Honda in Harrisburg. Get started at FaulknerHonda.com to be sure. simplify your life. Belco's checking accounts are easy to use, and most accounts have no minimum balance requirements or monthly service charges. No matter what bells are ringing, you can rely on checking with Belco. Because we believe in every person, every dream, every time. Join today at belco.org or any local branch. Belco Community Credit Union. Believe in better banking. Halftime here at Harrisburg, where the Stampede lead the Eagles 35-0. I'm joined in the booth by Jason Rammer, a special guest here today. And Jason, just want to start off by asking you, what does it mean to this community here in Harrisburg to have this team back here in 2024, second game of the year, and another good turnout here tonight? It's a great turnout. When you look around here, there's probably 1,200 people here tonight. This is the type of environment that this community needs. When you talk about Harrisburg, it's, it's a small-knit community. Uh, you know, we have a great Harrisburg Heat with the great soccer team. We have the Harris with the Senators on City Island. We miss indoor football. You know, I was uh, I advised the team when they were here 10, 11, 12 years ago. Uh, just so happy to see it back. Most importantly, this is a football town. When you think about Central Pennsylvania, you think Penn State football. You have you have the, you have the Eagles fans, Steelers fans, Ravens. And even because Carlisle used to host the Washington Redskins, now Commanders, you know, there's, there's a good Washington Redskins base in this area. It's a football region. It's a shame that we haven't had this type of football. And when you see game two, 1,200 people out here, or whatever the final attendance number is, but it looks like about, about last week's 1,200. This is, this is fantastic. What, what Justin Coble and Dazzle um, marketing is doing for this community, you can't you can't thank enough you, you know like tonight the coin toss was by the big brother by a big and little brother and i was talking to the little brother before the game uh matthew i believe his name was the his face you know it just radiated earlier today the stampede had almost 50 big brothers and and their little brothers out in the field for a camp that's what this is about when you're talking about this level that's what it's about well, and how about the play so far from Isaac Hurd 
unbelievable. Ten total touchdowns for him through the first six quarters. And he wasn't even tapped to be the right. start of this season. You, Your you, thoughts on him so far? You know, I, Isaac Hurd, you, no one saw this coming. Um, you know, I, I was talking to Coach Bernie last week. Right before, right, right before the game, and they were excited about the start. They had a great starting quarterback. They had that freak injury. He has stepped up. You see some of those runs he's doing out in the field. You know, I, I my view is right down on the twenty-five in a box. And when you when you're watching, he's watching the plays develop. That's what this team needs. You know, we're going to know a lot more about how good uh, Isaac Hurd and this offense is going to be this Thursday night when they're down in Columbus against. What most people are saying is the favorite for the league. The Stampede, they're strong. For the first year back, what they did last week in Cedar Rapids that people had in the top 15 of all the Arena League teams in the country. I mean, I understand this is more of an exhibition type game with the Maryland Eagles. This isn't competitive. That's how strong this is. But when you talk about Isaac, it starts with the line play. You look at the offensive line, two, six straight quarters. He's not being touched. You know, he, there's some, you're watching some center exchange issues, but beyond the center exchange issues, he has all the time in the world. That's how, what, no matter what level of football you're talking, football's one in the trenches. Both the offensive and defensive lines of Harrisburg looks pretty solid. Yeah, you mentioned the defensive line. Final question. Just your thoughts on this defense forcing six turnovers and pitching a shutout in the first half. Uh, you, you know, it starts with number 12. D. Thomas is out there. What he's doing he is disrupting on the line of scrimmage. And you, when you can disrupt the quarterback, you're, you're going to then see these type of plays. You know, last week it was competitive through midway through the second quarter. DT got in, disrupted the quarterback in that second quarter. And then you literally saw 20 to 7 score and the whole, the whole thing flipped. And, and Stampede then rolled from there. It started with the defense. And you can't be surprised when you look at Coach Bernie's background. He's one of the best defensive coaches in arena ball history. Well, he's got them flying around here tonight. Six turnovers, great start. Jason, really appreciate you making some time to join us on the broadcast here today. No worries. Take care, and, you know, thanks for the viewers tuning in because this is what it's all about here in Harrisburg. We'd love to see him at the next game. We'll take a quick break and return with an interview with head coach Bernie Nowitarski. You're watching Harrisburg Stampede Football on SFBN.
you up in boom, 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 boom
So we're just going to keep playing real hard pressure defense. And offensively, Isaacs looks sharp again. The offensive line play, though, really standing out. What have you liked from that group early on in the season, protecting Isaac by, back in the pocket? Yeah, they're still gelling. Uh, you know, it's coming together. And, you know, Isaac's falling in the line, you know, has, has taken that head job. And, uh, again, you know, I just want him to keep working on the, the basics. Take what the defense gives you and, and don't force. Coach, thanks for the time. Good luck in the second half. Mike, back to you guys. Thanks a lot, Chris. And we will kick off the second half of this game between the Harrisburg Stampede and the Maryland Eagles in just a few moments. The Stampede leading 35 0. And quarterback Isaac Hurd has been part of all five of those touchdowns with five successful extra points off the foot of Mechanicsburg High School soccer coach Joseph Panuccio. The officials are back on the field. The Maryland Eagles are as well, and we saw some infighting with the Harrisburg Stampede on that final drive of the first half. So hopefully everyone has managed to get out of their own way and get things situated. And we'll talk to Chris Markowitz in just a moment about that. But the fact that you had your left tackle and your right tackle getting in each other's faces yeah, that doesn't look good. I, I said, you know, the, the competitive spirits are there. Sometimes you have guys getting in arguments on the sideline. You have guys getting in arguments in the locker room. But, Chris, to see a couple of guys in live action on the same team getting in each other's faces, that, that was probably the one, the one dark cloud for the Stampede in the first half. Yeah, some frustrations flaring up towards the end of that second quarter there. But beyond that, Mike, this has been a dream start to the season for them. And, you know, walking out of the locker room with Coach uh, before that interview that I had with him down there, uh, that's something they were talking about. Like, I, I could overhear them talking about how they have to come together as a team. I even overheard them praying together. So I, I think that that beef has been squashed. And you see that all the time. This is a game that it takes a gladiator mindset in order to be successful in. And you've got 25 gladiators out there on the sideline for the Stampede. So... Not surprising to see something like that, but they were able to take care of it very quickly interior, on the interior. And we'll get to see Fabrizio Riley for the second time today, but this will be the first time he actually kicks the football as he lined up for a long field goal in the first quarter. An errant snap gave the Stampede first down and goal from the four, which led to the first touchdown of the game, a running touchdown from quarterback Isaac Hurd. Well, it's been smooth sailing for Harrisburg since pretty much the jump and to your point with them receiving the football to start here i wouldn't be shocked mike if they try a more methodical approach on offense just try to work the ball up the field at a slower pace and take some time off the clock because they are well on their way towards victory. there's still a lot of time but in a running clock league a 35 point advantage is quite the margin for Maryland to overcome. It absolutely is, and the Stampede has just come out onto the field for their second half warm-up, so a nice opportunity to take a break if one's available because we'll still be a minute or two before kickoff. Yeah, we are going to send it to a break. Don't go anywhere. Second half action in Harrisburg coming up next on SFBN.
Welcome back in to Harrisburg where the Stampede lead the Eagles 35-0. Still getting loose for the start of the second half. Chris Markowitz alongside Mike Garland. Mike, dominant first half for the Harrisburg Stampede. And they still have a half of football to play, but I know they're going to be hungry to take on Columbus and head down there on Thursday. Columbus considered by many to be the best team in the AIF. And the Stampede trying to start the season 2-0 and have some good momentum going into that matchup. And speaking with Jason at the half, he said, look, this is a team that offensively, if that offensive line holds up, they have the weapons to hang with anybody in the league. Well, they do, and, and you can use the second half of action for the Stampede as a, a glorified practice. I mean, you certainly don't want to take your competition lightly because if one team can put up 35 against another, then why couldn't the other team do the exact same thing? But at the same time, you use this to get crisp with your reps, to go maybe go into the playbook a little bit, try some things. As, as this uh, this halftime period, a little bit extended here, this is almost like a, like a Super Bowl-esque halftime. All that's missing is a Rock Nation uh, halftime concert. I thought you were going to go out and play the guitar for us, Mike. I am a horrible air guitarist. <laughs> I do not know how to play an instrument of any sort. None. I can't even whistle well. I am trying to catch up to my eight-year-old cousin in terms of play, playing Mozart, not Mozart, excuse me, some piano. Chopsticks? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> dun, Fair dun, enough. Dun, 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 dun. You can do it. I can play a little bit of Ode to Joy. That, okay. You know. And when the Saints How does that go, go marching in. Oh, I can, yeah, when the Saints go marching in. Ode to in. Joy. My kids have uh, recorders. They've been sent home these recorders. They're like flutes. And uh, when my first daughter brought it home, I said, let me see it. She gave it to me, and I threw it in the front yard. And then she went and fetched it. So I guess I guess it's something important. That you, you teach the music to the young people. I did not have – they did not give me music when I was a kid. I played the recorder briefly in second grade because it was required. Yeah, I played a recorder, a tape recorder. That was that was my jam back in the day. Eventually here we are going to get the second half underway. Not sure why the, the prolonged delay at halftime. There was a – uh, a, a ladies football league touch game that happened here at halftime. They they retired another number of a legacy stampede player. And finally, we are getting ready to go. The, the amount of time that these guys have been out here waiting to play almost matches the time they were in the locker room. So we, we talk about pace of play. This this halftime, whatever was going on here, didn't, didn't do anything to further that pace of play. Harrisburg getting the football to start in the second half once we do get underway here. Back to return is Marcus Taylor. So Harrisburg will receive the football already ahead by five touchdowns in the contest. Long kick stays in. Big Taylor down. bursts out of a cannon, and he's got one man to beat. Taylor to the end zone. Touchdown, Marcus Taylor. From one corner to the other, he goes 57 yards, and Harrisburg leads by 41. That was exciting. That was super exciting, and I apologize. I let my emotions out. I was thinking happy thoughts inside, and then I said happy thoughts. That was exciting. Here's another chance to call the replay. He, he pulled it in that far side corner, and then, like you said, shot out of a rocket, shot out of a cannon, and Fabrizio Riley, the last line of defense, and I'm going to guess Fabrizio plays soccer in real life because that, that was not a, a good form tackle attempt. So a 57-yard return touchdown by Marcus Taylor, taking it from one corner to the other. Panuccio on for his sixth extra point try of the evening. And this one's blocked, deflected by Frankie Sneed. So the score remains... 41-0 Harrisburg. Chris Markowitz alongside Mike Garland. And Mike, Harrisburg can do no wrong tonight. They can't. And you know what? That only took four seconds. Four seconds for him to go the distance on that kickoff return. That is, that's crazy fast. Harrisburg can do no wrong. And, and we're going to see that replay one more time. I mean, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and 1,004 and a half. And he's in. That's it. Incredible stuff there by Taylor. 
And for Maryland now, down by six scores, Mike. What is the strategy for the Eagles? I mean, I, I found out that the beverage station is open until 10, so I think you stay healthy enough to stop by for a post-game refreshment. I, I just, I mean, seriously, I don't know. The, these are guys that have some semblance of football experience, and, and you have pride and you want to play to win a game, and I think at some point you realize we're not going to win this game, but let's let's play for some pride. Let's play for the uniform. Let's play for each other. Yeah, this one has taken a turn for the worst quickly as Panuccio's kick sails out for a touchback. And Maryland will start its first drive of the half on its own 20-yard line. The Maryland offense, which has struggled, comes back out. Big number 72, Joseph Turner Starrett. Check that, that's not 72, that's 42. Desire Beach, he of hooded sweatshirt fame, makes his way to the left side. He is um, he's a fire hydrant. He is a, uh, he's a big fella. I'm not sure about the circumference. The height is uh, maybe 5'10", 5'11". The circumference is maybe 5'10", 5'11". Long deliberation here in the Maryland huddle. 18 seconds on the play clock. If you look hard, you can see it. And the clock rolling, just over 13 minutes remaining in the third quarter. Palmer in the gun. And did a the play clock expire, we don't know, but nearly intercepted is the pass. It's in and out of the hands of Jeremy Lewis. As Palmer underthrew his man. I was just gonna say the pass was underthrown and the DB did a nice job making a break. Jeremy Lewis stepped up, Jeremy Lewis out of Tiffin. You can see the shotgun snap into the hands of a Jay Palmer. That pass overthrown and Lewis makes the jump and just couldn't get the hands under it to cradle it and scoop it in. Clock rolling, 12, 20, and counting here in the third. The Eagles down by 41 points, but not in much of a hurry right now. No, no, they're not. There's playing with a sense of urgency, and then there's the opposite of that. Palmer motions Williams in the backfield. Deep ball. Over the middle, intercepted. Second interception tonight by Harrisburg. And being returned for a touchdown, taken all the way back by Anilio Pena. Anilio Pena out of Shepherd University. He had an interception last week. He has another this week. It is a pick six. I'm not sure that there's a mercy rule at this level of competition, but have mercy, as Uncle Jesse would say. The Harrisburg Stampede are all over the Maryland Eagles. The throw off the back foot of the quarterback and Anilio Pena just playing center field and takes it all the way to the house. To answer that question, there is no mercy rule here tonight. Mercy is for the week. So Harrisburg running the score up. Extra point try, no good. So a 47-0 lead for the Stampede with 10.57 remaining in the third quarter. Chris Markowitz alongside Mike Garland. Mike, we're running out of good things to say about Harrisburg. I, I mean, that, there's a kid on the field that I think won the, the, the Get Dressed Fast contest in the first quarter, still wearing the helmet, and is either being chased by that cheerleader or is leading some sort of spirit run around the field. I still say you take that kid, you put her in a Maryland Eagles helmet, and you put her out there for the black and red, and all of a sudden you have fresh legs, you have new energy, and a new opportunity for points. I think the Eagles are looking for anything they could muster right now, so they might be all ears if you were to get down there and do suggest we, that. Do we have Mike. wireless mics? We could go down and play, <laughs> like more than one. 
No, nah, my knee is not in that condition for that, my friend. Yeah, my knees are not in that condition either. So. Meanwhile, <laughs> Stampede trying to figure things out on this kickoff here. They, they've had a few of them. I'm not sure what has gone wrong now that they need extra discussion. And Joe Panuccio's missed a couple of extra points. That's really been the only special team slip up. They've run a kickoff back. They've been much better in kick coverage today versus last week against Cedar Rapids. And the clock will start as soon as the return commences. High end over end. May have clipped the ceiling. Keller settles underneath it and brings it back out to his own 13-yard line. Tackled on the play by Joshua Holly. Josh Holly's had himself a good game. We've mentioned his name a time or two. Holly's had a good season so far. He came up real big in the season opener against Cedar Rapids with a fumble recovery for a touchdown at the end of the half. He also had a couple big sacks in that play. And He's a guy that we can expect to see play a big impact for the Stampede this year. He played at 1AA Morgan State. We've mentioned he's a math teacher. Time for the dad joke of the broadcast. That uh, job likely has its pluses and minuses. I'm trying my best here, Mike. It's all right. I'm trying my best. It's all right. I got no follow-up for that one. No, you don't have to. You don't have to. It's okay. The, uh, the Maryland Eagles certainly have taken their time <laughs> coming out of the huddle here. Now we're down to about 18 seconds on the play clock. I'll tell you what, the Stampede have a multiplier of a certain magnitude right now. That's the best I could do there for you, you half joke-wise. Your attention was divided there. Here's a pitch into the backfield for a big loss. Taken down just shy of the end zone for Maryland is Glenn Keller. The Stampede think they recovered the football, but the officials say no. Keller was down on the two-yard line. It was a low snap. A.J. Palmer threw it like a hot potato, like, no, I don't want it. You hit that guy. And he threw the ball away, and Harrisburg just continues. The other thing to look for today, Chris, is the guys that are holding the sticks. They, they push them against the wall. Then they go try to stand behind the play. These guys are absolutely not outrunning anyone, and, and especially that gentleman over there. We don't want to show him on camera, but a couple of times they've been behind the play, and then the play has caught up to them. They have to stay out of the way. <laughs> it's second and a lot. Second and 22 as the sticks. <laughs> He's just dragging it are being readjusted here. No, that's not how that works, sir. Palmer in his own end zone. Oh, that's all Picked right. off and six more for Harrisburg. Howard Holton with the pick six. He's just, he's going home. He's going, taking that back, give it to a kid. Yeah, that, that stick probably should have stayed up the way a little bit more, but it's okay. The extra point team out one more time. And this one has turned ugly here in the second half. That pass just right into the hands of the Stampede defender Howard Holton out of Susquehanna University, just up Route 15 in Sealands Grove. You getting the arm loose there, Chris? You going in for the fourth quarter? <laughs> I don't know about that, my friend. Or did you hurt yourself sitting here? It's, I've been sitting here for a while, in, in my defense, you know. Sitting is hazardous. It's not good for you. Extra point is through, so Panuccio knocks it home after missing two straight. And it's a 54-0 lead for the Stampede with 7.21 to go in the third. Chris Markowitz alongside Mike Garland. And Mike, Yeah. with a 25-man roster, there's only so much you could do to give guys rest, but at what point does Harrisburg take the foot off the gas pedal? I mean, to be quite honest, have they ever really put it all the way down? They've been doing all of this in like third gear. They haven't even shifted into high speed. I, I, but what do you do? 
how do you do it? Maryland is giving them the football almost literally on every possession. This is like the time that Georgia Tech beat Cumberland College 222 to nothing. I mean, it's not going to be that bad, but it's, it's getting there. Three scores for the Stampede in just seven minutes and 39 seconds off the clock here in the third quarter. Media timeout on the floor. We'll take a break. You're watching Stampede Football on SFBN. Joseph Panuccio kicking off left to right on your screen as we return from a media timeout. 7.21 remaining in the third quarter. Harrisburg ahead by a lot. Chris Markowitz alongside Mike Garland. Strong kick by Panuccio, and it's another touchback. And Mike, the Stampede playing a perfect game right now. And they are playing a darn near perfect game. And... You, know, you said it before the break. You only have so many guys on the roster, so how do you how do you give some of these dudes a breather without also compromising the integrity of the game? You, you don't want to you don't want to make a joke of what's going on out here. You know, it's not like you want to put Panuccio out at quarterback or anything like that. But you also don't want Isaac Hurd to get hurt. I, I do see that they've put Jeremy Reynolds on the field. He's wearing number 62 just off screen to your left. You can see a conversation with the Maryland coaches and Eddie Robinson, a DB quarterback, and Robinson might be coming in to play quarterback now for the Maryland Eagles. Yeah, it will be Robinson taking the snaps midway through the third quarter. So a Jay Palmer's day at the quarterback spot done for now. First and 10 from the Maryland 20. Robinson scampers left, pump fakes and is shoved against the boards. Got a couple yards on the play taken down by Holly. Holly hasn't quit. He's not letting off the gas. He's still going full tilt. And it seems like, like the strategy right now for Maryland is take some time. Even they don't want to rush right now. Just letting time take off the clock. Perhaps just trying to get a couple plays in here. But they have not attempted to stretch the ball downfield in the second half. No, they have not. And now you have a new quarterback out there in Eddie Robinson. And so it's, it's a whole new dynamic that was at least a, a plus yardage play. Bad snap, Robinson picks up the fumble, but loses three yards on the play, met by a sea of white jerseys. Another, another low snap from the quarterback and the center. As a former center, it is, look, it's hard to, to fire that ball back there between your legs. You, you got your head down, you know there's gonna be contact, you gotta fire it on a bullet, and then get your head back up in time to He'll absorb the hit. The drum line here at the arena making some noise and having a good time. Everybody's having fun here. There's families here, great family entertainment, kids playing. Meanwhile, Maryland has a third down and 11 with Robinson in the gun. Deep ball over the middle, contact downfield and another interception. And this could be six more for the Stampede. It's Pena again, 
with his second pick six of the night. Not a pick six, pushed out near the one yard line. Oh wow, they do get him just shy. Yep, another ball into the stands. They gotta stop throwing these balls away. That's gonna blow the league budget. It appeared initially like it was a touchdown. Instead, they mark him out at the one. Good catch there. And Mike, even though he's a yard shy of picking up his second pick six of the day, I think Enelio Pena is the man we'll be talking to after this game. He is the player of the game. He's somebody we may focus on next week or at least two weeks from now as our star to watch. Meanwhile, Time continues to roll off the clock here in Harrisburg with 420 and counting in the third quarter. Heard pitch right. Franklin, touchdown. First touchdown of the year for Giovanni Franklin. But there's a flag down on the play. And now some shoving in the corner of the end zone. Let's see what the flag is for. The penalty is against Maryland, so the touchdown counts. Clock running, 340 and counting here in the third. That will be our main point of focus, Mike, for the next half hour or so here live. How fast can 18 minutes really run off the clock? Hopefully in 19 and a half. Now the rule for the final minute of play, the clock will stop on incomplete passes and on run plays that do not get back to the line of scrimmage. But can both teams just agree to say now, oh, now they're going to. Oh, it's a field goal fake and the two-point conversion picked up. Great play design there. And scampering in for the score. Number 81 for Harrisburg, trying to find him on our jersey. And that's Nate Beamer, who gets an opportunity today to join the roster. Nice moment for Nate. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it was more of a low snap. And he picked it up and trucked it into the end zone to pick up those, those two points. So it's 62 0. Three oh nine remaining in the third quarter. And a lot of fans beginning to file out. They've been thoroughly entertained by what their Harrisburg Stampede have been able to put together tonight. Harrisburg well on their way to a 2-0 start to the 2024 campaign. It has been quite the offensive showcase, fireworks of sort for the Harrisburg Stampede. 62-0. We'll have another kickoff in just a few moments for the Stampede. And still one quarter of action to go. I've lost count of the turnovers, by the way. Last I had it, it's 10 by the Eagles so far. But I could be wrong. I may have missed one. Is it fair to say the Eagles' wings have been clipped? Unfortunately, that's probably the case. Another high kick by Panuccio sails out for a touchback. The 20 yard line will be where Maryland starts this drive yet again with 3.09 to play in the third. The more I watch Panuccio kick off, the more I think he's angling for those goalposts and that, that single, that uno. He was practicing it during warmups and the last few kickoffs, you know, why not, right? He's gotten closer and closer each time. Has the leg to do it, but I think the struggle, Mike, is keeping it just low enough. Both of those kicks, back-to-back -back kickoffs we've seen from him, have nearly hit the ceiling here. Clock rolls. It took us about 55 minutes to play the first half. It's now 8.45, nearly an hour later, and we're not done with the third quarter. The clock does stop after scores, and there's been so many of them here in the third. Yeah, Harrisburg led 35-0 going into the half. 
The Stampede have scored four touchdowns here in the third quarter. Robinson on a keeper. Brought down for a loss. First man to get there was Anya, who's had a great evening defensively. Well, the plus for the Maryland Eagles is they ran a play and didn't turn the ball over. Progress, not perfection. And the crowd that's still here doing their best to support the home team. I want to thank everyone for tuning in on SFBN, on PCN, and of course those who have come out in person. A minute 15 counting here in the third. The Eagles in no hurry. I think we'll see them run back-to-back -back plays here leading us to the fourth quarter break. We get to take a break in the fourth quarter? <laughs> That's what it says in the rundown, Mike. Okay. Robinson with time to throw, fires over the middle, complete. Big pickup by Marcus Morgan, his first catch of the day, and it's a first down. Excitement from Marcus Morgan as well to haul that one in. The tackle made by Jeremy Lewis, but that was a real football play. It looked good for the Maryland Eagles. Eddie Robinson on the pass and the catch and plus yardage. And the Eagles in the red zone tonight for just the second time as they have the football on Harrisburg's 17-yard line. Crowd getting into it. The band keeping these fans entertained. This could be the final play of the third quarter as Maryland looking to put points on the board. If you're Harrisburg, though, at this point, you want that shutout. That's the thing you're playing for over the next 15 and a half minutes. Robinson pressured right away and brought down on a combination sack. Issa Daria, the first man to get there. Uh, the defense for the Stampede has been here, there, and everywhere. And another sack as that third quarter clock will wind down to zero. Daria with the pressure, and it's been all night long. Harrisburg dominating Maryland. The Stampede ahead of the Eagles, 62 zip as we enter the fourth. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Stampede Football on SFBN. Football at midfield for Maryland after a big loss. Second and 20 for the Eagles entering the fourth quarter. And that's the least of their worries, to be honest with you, Mike. They trail the Stampede 62 to nothing with 15 minutes left to play. I mean, the, the, right now, the score on the scoreboard is, is like what you see in early season college football when, when Penn State plays Delaware or something like that. It's, it's a tune-up game. And sure, they're getting ready for Columbus next week, but it's it's been it's been something i don't think i've ever been part of a broadcast with a with a blowout like this the clock pause it will start and begin rolling up until the one minute mark as soon as we get a snap here robinson rolls right pressured immediately and that's the first catch by a fan this season sign that guy up i love that he gets a high five from howard holton as well right there in front of his family great moment there a lot of souvenirs have been given out today 
most of them on touchdowns given to fans, but that's a legit catch by a man in the stands. That was legit. You know, they make an announcement before the game that as the balls fly in the stands, you're supposed to give them back, but I don't see anyone ever taking them. You can see the quarterback rolls out. I mean, he looked it in, even with the lanyard around his neck. Didn't let that extra, extra bit there get in the way. Well, he's got to be careful, though. In danger of a flag for excessive celebration, right. putting the hands up there. Exactly, exactly. He did a great job, though. That is, I believe, the first fan catch we've seen this season. We have seen a fan get blown up on the board. So, but she didn't drop her beverage. That was impressive. I that know, may, right? That may be more more impressive. All due respect to that that catch right there. Again, you go back to the money you pay for the beverages at these sports venues. You want to hold on to that. Third and twenty for Maryland. Robinson has time, throws end zone incomplete, and that is a missed chance for a catch by a fan. That's been more the norm. So fourth and long for the Maryland Eagles. The clock continues to wind. The Eagles need to get either 20 yards or points in the end zone here and Mike to your point for Harrisburg at this point it's you're playing for pride defensively trying to get the shutout and no they will try Maryland a field goal here trying to crack the scoreboard Fabrizio Riley set to take this it's like bunting during a perfect game 38 yard field goal try and it's blocked Scooped up, and we may have a chance for a return as it's Reynolds up the sideline, taken down at the Maryland 15. It's rare you see someone with speed wearing number 62, but that's what just happened right there as that field goal was partially blocked, and Jamar Reynolds picked it up and advanced it deep into Maryland Eagles territory. First down from about the 15-yard line with a chance to put seven more on the board. Take a look at it one more time. The snap was decent. The hold was good, just too much penetration, and it was blocked there about a yard or two deep in the in the backfield. And what a statement made by the Stampede there saying, if you're going to score on us, it's got to come in the end zone. Clock rolling 12-25 and counting here in what has basically become a formality. The Stampede well on their way to a 2-0 start here in 2024. Hurd rolls right, fires right in and out of the hands of Aaron Brown. Chris Markowitz alongside Mike Garland. Mike, Isaac Hurd with an interception today. His first turnover of the year, but look, he's played well. He's taken the yards in front of him on the ground when he's had the opportunities. He's thrown the ball well, and he hasn't missed a beat coming into this year as the backup quarterback, he looks like the day one starter for, Har for Harrisburg. Absolutely. Time to throw. He's got a man, but left it short. A rare pad throw there by Hurd as it was Gorman open for six. He was wide open. The pass was underthrown. I have to give credit to one of the near side officials as William Harvey, the right end for Maryland, was lined up in what I suspect would have been an illegal defensive formation, and he walked up, tapped him on the hip to try to get him in place because regardless of what we're seeing in front of us, yes, this is indoor football, but it's possible that you can see in just a moment that tap to get him to shuffle in a little bit. You know, a lot of these guys, maybe they've never played indoor ball before or they're, they're generally new to the game. You don't always know. Of course, you know to line up behind the line of scrimmage, don't go off sides, but where to line up otherwise. Third and 10 now, Heard with time. Miscommunication, he fired it high for Brown on the post route. And that brings up fourth down for Harrisburg. Looks like the Stampede want to go for it here. I think you have to at this point. You, you've succeeded offensively on all but one of your possessions tonight. You, you want to keep that, that mark alive, although they're sending the field goal unit out now to try to make it a 65 point spread. Longest try of the season for Panuccio. And this will be from 30 yards out. Go. 
Good snap, good hold, the kick, good. Panuccio with a 30 yard field goal and the Stampede push the lead to 65. It's almost, is that retirement age at this point? Harrisburg's collecting social security right now. Something like that. 9.50 for the clock should still be running now. Just go. The fact that there's a way to make it go faster, press that button. The, Mar the Maryland offense gets another chance and for the Harrisburg defense, the chance for a shutout it continues. It's becoming more real the longer this game goes on. This Harrisburg team has come to play. 35 nothing lead at the half. They have not taken their foot off the gas pedal, scoring 30 points here in the second half. And we will have an immediate timeout. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Stampede Football on SFBN. Harrisburg leads Maryland 65-0. Chris Markowitz alongside Mike Garland. Mike, you got any dinner plans for later tonight? Uh, no, it's really not healthy to eat after like 9.30, 10 o'clock. So, no, probably not. Maybe some movie and a popcorn. That sounds fun. Well, Harrisburg's going to be enjoying their evening. Maryland with a lot to think about right now, down by 65 points. And the pain will not let up as Williams tosses the return man, McCarter, to the turf. No mercy tonight from the Stampede. No mercy at all. Although, you know, you ask about the food, you know what looks good? We've seen a couple of uh, restaurant commercials. Texas Roadhouse, those uh, those biscuits, the buns that you get, man. I could go load up on those things all day long. I, I could I could live and then probably die on Texas Roadhouse biscuits. <laughs> I've been salivating each time those commercials run, my friends. We need to get that armadillo from the lobby to bring us some biscuits next time we're here. Everyone's been eating tonight for Harrisburg. A stat sheet stuffing performance by the Stampede. We'll talk with Anilio Pena after the contest. Pena with two interceptions, one of them a pick six, the other he returned to the half yard line. And the story tonight for Harrisburg, the only remaining story, Mike, can the Stampede pull off the shutout? Nine minutes away from answering that, that question there, Chris. New quarterback in for Maryland, Maybe. Roland Williams. Check that, no, it looked like Williams was calling signals and said it's still Robinson under center. Out of the gun, he scampers right, pressured, throws deep, nearly picked off again by Pena. That would have been interception number three. It was a hard hit against the dasher board on the near side. This time the, the fan that went down was a little bit older, but she bounced back up too. A little dirt, dust yourself off. Resiliency here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. 
That's what you want. Now, Eddie Robinson did a nice job hustling in the backfield. He was under pressure, avoided a sack just to throw it away and get that incompletion, although he nearly had his pass picked off around the 15-yard line. Eight minutes remaining in the fourth. Harrisburg moments away from improving to a 2-0 start this season. Maryland in no hurry here. The Eagles, I think they're just complacent, Mike, if they're able to get six points on the board. They are trying their darndest to get some points. They tried a field goal, which got blocked. They're still passing. I, I will say this. I haven't seen any quit in this Maryland team. They've struggled to be successful, but I haven't seen any quit. Now, a timeout has been called. Any chance the clock can still run during this timeout? I, I was, I'm a big advocate of making that rule change right now, Mike. <laughs> 7.27 remaining in the fourth quarter. We're going to keep it here. Chris Markwitz alongside Mike Garland. Mike, Maryland trying to figure out where they're stopping for dinner on the way home tonight. Lots of options between here and, uh, and depending on what part of Maryland. I'm assuming they're coming out of the Baltimore area. So you leave here, you, you get on 83. I mean, the further south you go, there's a Royal Farms. I know you're an eastern Pennsylvania guy, so you're more of a Wawa guy. I'm a central PA guy, so it's sheets around here. But the more south you get, you go to Royal Farms. I'll tell you what, if you've never had a chicken sandwich at Royal Farms, those things are huge. Huge. Turkey Hill and Rudder's also viable options. I'm, I'm just so hungry right now, Mike. This is not helping me. Sorry. But I'm wondering how many, how many cars those guys came up in, because we know they didn't come up in a bus. And you have 24, 25 guys. Did, did they six or seven cars? Did they carpool? They all met at the team facility and then drove up together. Some of them going to stay in Harrisburg tonight and go out on the town. Are they sticking around for the dog show tomorrow? Dog show was exciting coming in here to see. I will, I will admit that one to you. It was fun watching the owners walk their dogs out in the parking lot. Meanwhile, 7.27 remaining in regulation. Second and 10 for Maryland from their own 14. Eddie Robinson in the gun. Keeper to his left. Picks up about a yard. Brought down by Anya and Williams. Extracurricular, some pushing and shoving, but nothing substantial. They give Holly credit for the tackle as well. Fraction of a tackle for the math teacher. Or a percentage of the tackle. And the PA announcer is saying fourth down here, so we're lagging it down behind. Fourth and ten. I thought it was third down as well. I'm not going to argue with what we see out there on the field. You know, first down was the incomplete pass. Second down was right there. You're right, it should be third down. Go down and tell him. Well, on fourth down, it's Robinson wrapped up and taken down for a loss. Williams will get credit with the sack. So with 6.20 remaining, the Stampede will take over. And Mike, how aggressive do you expect them to be here offensively? Very. I, I think they're going to go to the end zone on the first play. I don't think they're going to break 90 like we talked about earlier, but there's a reasonable chance they can break 70 in the blink of an eye. The officials rolling the clock as both teams exchange units. I, I think a wise decision there by our officiating staff. We've called a great game. Michael Davis, Joe Letizia, Shane Gemmel, Ken Broom, and Steve Kinney. A nice hustle job by Roland Williams to truck his way towards the bench. The Stampede in no hurry here. Less than six minutes away from improving to 2-0 on the year. Hurd looking for the end zone, fires that way, nearly intercepted. Frankie, Frankie Steed. Steed, jinx. 
Frankie Sneed with the defensive covers, and that's probably one of the best defensive plays we've seen from the Maryland Eagles tonight. So it, it speaks to what I've said earlier as, as we're kind of trying to fill our way through this broadcast that th there's no give up on this Maryland Eagles team. They're still playing hard. They're playing to the final whistle, and Sneed did a great job getting in there and knocking it away. And we've seen a couple times now here, not to harp on it because this game has gotten so out of hand, but a couple plays now where Hurd has had a lot of time to throw, Mike, but with all that time, he's forced it into a tight window. He has, and his line has done a great job blocking for him. On second down. Hurd, good pass, and it's a touchdown. Simmons with his first score today. And Harrisburg adds to the lead as they crack 71 points onto the scoreboard. Todd Simmons, the former Wagner Seahawk, had a handful of touchdowns last week. And another tonight. It's now 71. Can Panuccio make it 72? I'm going to Wikipedia, Mike since we've got the time. And I'm going to try to see if I can find what the Harrisburg Stampede scoring record and margin of victory record is I for mean, a single game. Margin, we've, we've got to be there as, as Panuccio nearly takes out our cameraman in the end zone. But he, he stood strong there in the upper end zone on that shot. Yeah, I mean, 71 has got to be a pretty reasonable record for a, for a margin. I don't know about points totals. And who's updating the Harrisburg Stampede Wikipedia page? That I cannot tell you. Well, I know that after that touchdown from Isaac Hurd to Todd Simmons, it is 71 to nothing for the Harrisburg Stampede with 4.04 remaining. We hope to talk to Emilio Pena after the game. He had an interception last week versus Cedar Rapids. He had a touchdown this week on a pick six, another interception. So he is our player of the game, to say the least. The mascot is on screen. His pants fell down. Close. I mean, the tri it's saggy mascot bottom over there. I've got no comment on that one, partner. <laughs> Staying away from that. 404 remaining in the fourth. You really want to paint the picture for those that aren't here as to what they're missing and why <laughs> they need to come back out to the arena on April 27th for the next home game against Columbus. You've got to be here. There's mascots and saggy shorts. There's fans catching passes and getting trucked. There's, there's there's, fun stuff at halftime. And I think I'm going to be here too. And that just adds to it, my friend. Yes, I think that's, just, that's, that's the selling point right there. You should have started with that. Everybody finds out I'm here. They're now asking for a refund. Now, this has been fun, entertaining football, especially if you're a fan of the home team. You want to send the home fans home happy. Yeah, there was a lot to be excited about tonight if you were a Stampede fan. With Harrisburg dominating their way to a victory. Panuccio uncorks a bomb, trying to kick it through the ceiling there. And it's a touchback for Maryland. But will they spot the ball at the 20, or do they push it where it hit the ceiling? They're going to put it at the 20. See, now, I played a lot of pickup football, you know, three on three, four on four, touch football on the street. And I was, you know, middle school when the Jerry Dome, the Jerry's World was built. We had a rule, so on fourth down, you, you to punt, you would throw it off to the other side of the field. But there'd be cables, Yeah, obviously, right? You know, your electric cables or just cable TV cables hanging up there. And if you hit that, it was called a Jerry Jones. Made famous for punts that would right, hit, right that hit the, the scoreboard. And it was, scoreboard. It, our rule is we just do it over again. Yeah. So that's how you throw your shoulder out after two or three Jerry Joneses in a row accidentally hitting the cable. I like to have the kind of money Jerry Jones has. First and ten for Maryland in a game that has gotten out of hand and continues to do so. As Devin Thomas sacks Eddie Robinson. Robinson's slow to get up, but he's helped up in a combination from Joseph Turner Sterrett of the Maryland Eagles and Banks Williams. Take a look at that replay. 
You see the rush coming off the left side, the blind side, if you will, for the quarterback. And a big celebratory set dance from Devin Thomas. Thomas and the defense with a lot to celebrate tonight. They're two and a half minutes away from pitching a shutout here in their week two performance against Maryland. That shutout opportunity very much alive, but I don't think we've seen the last points of the night either, Chris. Still some time left for Maryland to get a deep strike going. They've had some chances, Mike, on some deep balls, just haven't been able to convert. They have. Some of the passes have been there and knocked away, underthrown, overthrown, intercepted. Speaking of interceptions, another near pick. Devin Thomas had it in his hands and could have rolled in for the touchdown. And Aaron Brown was in the face of Eddie Robinson. Brown forced that, that pass right into the arms of Devin Thomas. Take a look at it one more time. Brown just bull rush, split a double team in the face of Eddie Robinson. Maybe a face mask, but no call. And then that pass thrown right towards Devin Thomas, which fell short. A minute 24 and counting here in the fourth. Maryland running what will be one of their last two potential shots here to score. And we're coming up on uh, that dreaded one minute warning where the next 60 seconds may take 10 minutes. We shall see. Maryland runs the clock down to the one minute warning. And it's been fun, Chris. I'm setting the stopwatch right now. Do it. Well, things are a little bit different here. They're, they're, they seem to be just like, fine, the clock stopped, but let's just get up and run a play. Don't get stuck in that post-game traffic, that's for sure. Robinson in the gun, third and 20 for Maryland. He's got time, fires over the middle, and it's picked off. Holton with another touchdown. Fires it into the crowd, nice catch by a fan, and Harrisburg continues to pile it on. I told you it wasn't gonna be the last we saw of points tonight. How's your stopwatch going, by the way? <laughs> Close to a minute already. All right, there you go. This is a, it's like watching basketball when all the teams save their timeouts towards the end and then you utilize the TV timeouts. You can see on the replay here, Robinson comes back across the middle and I mean the the, the, the receiver, Howard, is it Howard Holton? They gobbled it up. Yeah, it was Holton. Holton was, was wide open. And a nice moment for that fan right there. Absolutely. It's a different kind of fan catch. All the way up in the rafters, too. Holton with quite the arm to get it there. Solid throw. Panuccio on for the extra point. I think that Harrisburg's found their emergency quarterback. We talked about briefly how, you know, Simmons is tabbed as that guy, but Holton showing off the arm as Panuccio fires another extra point through the uprights and the lead up to 78 for Harrisburg. Well, Maryland's going to get the ball back one more time, Chris. A couple of timeouts. Two to be exact. The clock stops after every play as well, so you know, I think we're going to see the onside kicks and the, the comeback, the comebackery that we saw last week from Cedar Rapids. But if you're Maryland right now, you, you want to put some points on the board. You do not, you don't want to get shut out. I'm not sure 78 to 6 or 78 to 7 is much better, but you don't want to get shut out. This is going to be a long ride home for the Eagles. That's all I've got to say. It's like Mike Tyson's punch out where, like, little Joe got one punch in on Mike before he KO'd him. Or, I, I'm sorry. Jake Paul gets one punch in on Mike Tyson <laughs> before he KOs him. Have you seen some of those video memes? Like, Jake Paul essentially is you know, little Joe or, or whatever for the old Mike Tyson's punch out. He, that's going to be a, I don't know if it's going to be a publicity stunt or what the deal is, but I, I want to see Tyson take it seriously. I've never really seen Tyson fight in a legit fight. <laughs> I'm not sure this is a legit fight, but I think he's going to go out there and want to whoop some tail. And a timeout taken by Maryland. 
Three minutes have gone by since the one-minute warning, Mike. <laughs> well, we, we know you can't take them with you. I just don't think they had personnel out on the field, so they needed to call that timeout to get the right eight bodies out on the field. And it's a quick timeout, to their credit. It really was. It was, we're going to call the timeout so we can get the dudes out there, and then let's just get back at it. Can the referees just say no? Why can't the referees just say, let's go home? It's 78 nothing. <laughs> like a timeout, sir. No. Short kick here. That's something. McCarter makes one man miss. McCarter across the 15. Decent return there. Got 10 yards. How about the hustle by Jaimer Reynolds, one of the bonus players added to the roster. He was that one man that missed, but then hustled back to make the tackle. So Maryland will have another possession with 43.9 seconds remaining as we're now almost five minutes in since the one minute warning. The game that refuses to end for Maryland. And now some confusion here for the Stampede as they only have seven men on the field. Holton will join them. Maybe that's the, the power play in that, okay, you guys are up 78, just play a man down. At this point, I mean, Maryland could bring six or seven more guys out here, play 11 versus eight. I formation. Run and shoot. First and 10 for Maryland. Ball on their own 17. Trouble with the snap. And it's Harrisburg football. Aaron Brown with the recovery. Oof. That was... Uh, and I believe that might have been Devon Hall, number, is that number seven or still number two, Eddie Robinson? That was Eddie Robinson that was at quarterback, and he fumbled the shotgun snap off his knee. He didn't so much fumble it as he didn't catch it. And Aaron Brown went in there to get it. This post-game handshake is going to be awkward. Aaron Brown earned himself a schmuffin. Or some biscuits from Texas Roadhouse. They're a sponsor. I think so we'll I know where I'm stopping on my ride home. Texas Roadhouse? That might be the spot. There you go. Hopefully they're still open. I don't know where there is one near here. I know where the one is that we see in the commercial. It's near my house, but I don't know where there is one between here and your house. But luckily there's a thing called Google. Yeah, I'll have to throw it into a search bar. That's what yeah. I'll do. Google, take me to the best biscuits ever. <laughs> Meanwhile, You'll either end up at Texas Roadhouse or at Ted Lasso's house. I, would, I wouldn't mind the latter. And Maryland takes a timeout. How are we doing? Six minutes and 43 seconds since the <laughs> one-minute warning. I should write a sternly worded letter to the league. <laughs> what league? This is a non-league affair. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. Let's just get returned to sender. I feel like those letters I send to Santa. Uh, he, I believe in him still. Oh, yeah, he, you got He to. doesn't believe in me for some reason. No, no, I still hear the bells. I can still hear the bells. Besides, when you're a you know single guy like me, who else is going to bring me presents at Christmas <laughs> time? I always try to remind my kids, like, well, Dad, who's taking you out for your birthday? Me. And I'm paying for you guys, too, because you're 12 and 9. That's yeah, quite the uh, quite the adventure there, Mike. I know, right? Ugh. That's why I'm not getting food. You know tonight. what present I would love to see tonight? Double zeros on the uh, scoreboard. Well, in, there's in, a, in there's the game one, clock. There's section. one zero up there. Yeah, this uh, has been something. Not a lot of game notes, folks. Not a lot of stats. Not a lot to work off of, and especially when you have a 78 nothing shellacking. 
Hasbury ah. looking end zone, Ooh. nearly picked. So the clock will pause as Davion Hall <laughs> unable to come away with the interception. I told a friend of mine I'd be home by around 10. I was going to be early for a minute. Nah, not now. I want to thank our, our great crew for helping bring you this game tonight and tolerating us. Yeah, Sean Kelly doing a great job, not just directing, but having patience with our shenanigans this evening. But Sean Kelly on the other, we got a third mic. I don't know if that's Sean's MO. Second and 10, it's a pitch to Franklin, who barrels into the end zone for another touchdown. Mike, you and I are going to spend a little more time getting to know one another. 30 seconds <laughs> remain on the clock. Harrisburg continuing to You know, attack. maybe they will get to 90 at this point. I mean, that's crazy. Give it to the big man. Give it to Giovanni Franklin from Anchorage, Alaska, some 4,000 miles from home. And he didn't have to go 4,000 miles there, just about 15 yards. And it's a touchdown for the big guy. If you've never been to Anchorage, you should go. It's a beautiful town. It's on my list. I will say, I do want to go there. There's a, a stampede player being taken out on a stretcher. Extra That's no point. good. Extra point is no good, but to your point, yes, Mike, there is a player being taken away on a stretcher right now. And we didn't see any injuries. We didn't see anything that would indicate, you know, something major, but that's unfortunate. We'll have to get an update and bring that info to you in a couple of weeks if we can. But, but to that, all the more reason why, you know, maybe a game like this doesn't, doesn't need to go the distance because now you're risking getting somebody hurt we're 10 plus minutes into the last 60 seconds of this game. Seriously, it has taken 10 minutes to play 29.9 seconds of action. Well, at that rate, we're only halfway there, partner. Oof. There'll be a kickoff here in just a moment. As some of the Maryland players are working their way onto their bench. They're missing a player. And, you know, there's actually a guy on the roster. I wish I could find his number right now. But there, there, there are some dudes who have not played for Maryland tonight. Like, they brought them, but they have not played them. And if you haven't made your way onto the field in a 78 to nothing game, I'm sorry, 84 to nothing game, what is going on? Even the kicker's been on the field twice. Thrice, actually, he kicked off to start the second half and promptly gave up a... A kick six. Yeah, to your point, just one kickoff opportunity for Maryland because Harrisburg, Harrisburg's done all the scoring. It's been quite the doozy tonight. Do we think we're done seeing points tonight, Chris? Mike, I think we're going to be here for another 15 minutes. I, I don't know about you, my friends. Why do you got to say stuff like that? I mean, do we, do we put kicker Joe Panuccio out there to uh, – Give him a, a touchdown opportunity? Why not? Get it, get us to 90 with Panuccio diving into the end zone. <laughs> get us to 90, he says. They're, they got an opportunity right now. 84-0 with 30 seconds remaining in regulation. I'm going to write it down now as 84-0. 84 you don't have any more timeouts, sir. You took them all. At this point, you just get a delay game penalty. And there's the guy. That's the guy that hadn't played yet. And he looks like a guy that hasn't played yet. It's Steven Spivey. Not sure if he was supposed to be in on that play or not. All of us aren't sure if he was supposed to be in on that play. But he tried. Steven Spivey, good for him. He got on the field tonight, Chris.
Handoff on first down. And that gets back to the line of scrimmage. The clock will run. Please. That might be the last play of the game. Here comes Steven Spivey. Oh, come on. He's not even going to get the play in a play. He really wants to. I know. Ah, oh, come on. Did somebody call a timeout so Mr. Spivey can catch a pass. That's going to do it. Final score in this one, Harrisburg 84, Maryland 0. Dominant stuff from the Stampede. Well, that was something, man. I, I don't even know how you summarize that in one professional-sounding post-game wrap-up, but it was a dominating effort by the Stampede defense. It was a calculated and well-executed effort by the Stampede offense. And the Maryland Eagles, I'll tell you what, they tried. They tried. We'll have a word with Anilio Pena in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Stampede Football on SFBN. time to go big time at Faulkner Honda in Harrisburg. Get big time selection. Choose from rows and rows of new 2024 Pilots, Accords, Passports, and more. Get big time savings. Drive a new Civic, just $2.99 a month. Choose from a great selection of Honda CRVs from just $3.79 a month. It's springtime, so go big time at Faulkner Honda in Harrisburg. Get started at FaulknerHonda.com to be sure. Welcome back to the Pennsylvania State Farm Show Complex where it's a final, the Harrisburg Stampede 84, the Maryland Eagles 0. I am Mike Garland. Chris Markowitz will join us in just a moment. A dominating effort for the Stampede en route to this non-league game. We'll send it down to Chris right now with our player of the game, Anilio Pena. Thanks, Mike, here with Anilio Pena. Anilio, two interceptions for you today, one of them a pick six. What was going through your mind on that return to the house? Uh, man, it was surreal. Uh, first and foremost, I want to give my uh, all the glory to God. Um, but as soon as I caught it, I just knew, follow my blocks, get to the side, and just uh, go full speed, get into that end zone, man. Get some points for the defense. Shout out for you guys tonight. Your thoughts on the defenses of performance. You guys struggled in the first quarter of the home opener, but since then, you guys have not allowed any points. Yeah. Uh, this defensive crew, it took us a while to uh, kind of get the hang of things. We all came in at different times. But once we got the feel for each other and uh, we built that connection, it's it's history after that. Two and zero start here at home. Your thoughts on the atmosphere and going into Columbus next week, knowing that's one of the better opponents in the AIF. Yeah, it's a big team. We we know what we have to do. We're going to study. We're going to take this win, and uh, we're we're locked in. We're prepared. We're going to do what we have to do to go in and uh, get the win. Congrats on the win. Good luck moving forward. Right, so Mike, back up to you. 
Thanks a lot, Chris. Thank you, Emilio. And a fun game for all involved. The fans that came had a good time. The ones that stuck around to the end got to see some history. No doubt the biggest scoring margin victory in Stampede history. Stampede on the road next week, taking on the Columbus Lions, then back home again late April to face those very same Lions. That's going to do it for us here tonight at the Pennsylvania State Farm Show Complex. For Chris Markowitz, our SFBN crew, I am Mike Garland. Thanks for tuning in. Your final from Harrisburg, it's Stampede 84, Eagles nothing.